Hello and welcome to another Edexcel IGCSE Computer Science Past Paper question. We are looking at paper one and we've already covered paper questions one to five. I'll link above to question one in the playlist. Today we are looking at question six. So question six. A train company uses ticket vending machines at each station. The machines use embedded systems. Explain one benefit of using an embedded system and these machines. Embedded systems are computers that do one task and examples of which you can think of your washing machine that has a computer that controls a spin cycle. Your car may contain different computers to do specific things like control the wiper blades. They just do one task. Now, the common characteristics of these machines are that they have more ROM than RAM and they probably haven't got a hard drive. They've got all their programs stored in ROM. Probably haven't got a screen. They're not normal computer systems like you're probably using now. They are simple computers that are programmed to do one thing, one thing only. So the question says, what are the benefits of using embedded systems in ticket machines? So the benefits are that it's meant to do one task and so be more efficient and optimized for that task only. And if you think about the ticket machine, it hasn't, might not have a lot of space. So you don't want a full computer system. You just need a small computer and that computer is optimized to do exactly one thing and use the space and, and no more. It's more efficient. Question two, customers use a touch screen to select their destination. They can pay by cash or bank card. Their tickets and receipt are printed. The touch screen is controlled by an embedded system. You have two other hardware components in a ticket machine that are controlled by embedded systems. So you look at the computers that are embedded, the computers that do one thing only. You need examples of them. So if you think about what we've got in that, in that system, we've got a bank card reader for the magnetic strip on a debit or credit card. And the second one would be ticket printer. For example, there's two, two examples there of a ticket machine. We've got a ticket printer and a bank card reader. Three, the ticket machine uses data encryption when a bank customer pays using a bank card. Statewide data encryption is used in this case. Right, the bank card means financial transaction, money, and the bank card, the information from the bank card could be stolen. So it needs to be encrypted, scrambled, so that if it was intercepted, if it was read by someone with criminal intent, then it'd be encrypted and they wouldn't be able to read the information. So the answer to that is to prevent unauthorized people reading the information from the card. B. Compare four features of high-level and low-level programming languages. High-level languages, examples are Python, JavaScript, C Sharp. Low-level is machine code, programming, and assembly language. So high-level is Python, JavaScript, etc. And low-level is machine code and assembly language. And if we think about those, we're thinking about Python and JavaScript being English-like statements, easier to read, you can comment the code. Whereas with low-level languages, you've got, what you've got is not particularly easy to read. Machine code is in binary, so very, very difficult to read. Also assembly language is uses mnemonics and though slightly easier to read than binary, isn't, isn't as easy to read as high-level programming languages. So the answer I've got written down for this is high-level programming languages contain English-like statements and as such are more easy to read. You can also comment the code as well. It makes the code easier to understand and to program. High-level languages are not hardware-specific. They can be used on many different types of hardware, which makes the program written in them much more portable. When you program machine code, you're programming, programming the hardware. And as such, that means that it isn't portable. You cannot move it to another piece of hardware, another CPU. You're programming the CPU. So it has hardware specific. When you write a program in Python, you can transfer it to many different computers and run it on there. It isn't hardware specific.
Question C. This is a big question. This is the last question of the whole paper and it is worth six marks. So it is, it is pretty much a game changer. It's gonna, it's gonna potentially increase your mark band. So it's worth having a go at this, but it's also worth understanding what you need to do with these types of questions to answer them. Let's read the question through, then we'll look at the mark scheme and understand what the examiners are expecting in their answer to this question. Artificial intelligence, AI, in many forms has an increasing impact on our lives. Discuss the statement considering characteristics, uses and ethical issues. This is what the examiner looks at. There are three levels to this. Level one, which is one to two marks. Level two, three to four marks. And level three, five to six marks. Level one, one to two marks. Basic independent points showing elements and understandings of key concepts. Discussion will contain basic information with little linkage between points made. So for that, you're just written, writing down some understanding, showing some understanding of it, but really not kind of linking the points together. Level three, four marks, you show some links to the points. So you make reference to the previous point, you link the points together, there is some coherence. The answer flows. And you're showing a more adequate understanding of key concepts of computer science. Level five, six, comprehensive knowledge and understanding and relevant knowledge, understanding of key concepts, principles of computer science to support the discussion being presented. The discussion shows a well-developed, sustained line of reasoning, which is clear, coherent, and logically structured. So your answer is clear. It's written, obviously, good use of spelling, punctuation, grammar. And it shows that you really understand what AI is and you've written about some of the uses of AI, you've written about some of the concepts around AI and looked at some of the limitations of AI to really develop that, that reasoning to get five to six marks. So I put together a model answer for this. Now, this is my answer, not, this is what I would do myself to get six marks. So I'll read, I'll read through this. AI is programmed in software. So it's just explaining what, how it's created, what it is. It can be created using neural networks and modeling of scenarios and situations to ensure it's realistic and represents real life. The data used to create the algorithms can be thoroughly checked to ensure it's realistic and representative as possible. Algorithms learn by identifying patterns and checked data. Now, just notice the typo there. It should have been two T's in patterns. There's me talking about spelling, punctuation, and grammar. Um, I have corrected myself there, though. There's, there is definitely two T's in patterns. Right. Its uses are wide ranging and it can be used, for example, in robotic online store help assistants that provide different responses based on use. So I've got how it's created and then I've got a bit about here its uses. If I scroll down, I'm talking about issues. So the issues with AI include job losses, as there will be less requirements for help desk type jobs. These can now be done with AI. Sometimes mistakes can be made to the AI not being properly programmed. Some people might not trust the AI systems. Life or death decisions cannot be completely in the hands of AI as catastrophic mistakes could be made. So to meet those six marks there, I've got a bit about how it's done, a bit about its uses, and a bit about the issues with AI. So that completes question six of paper one. Um, apologies for the typo there. Um, make sure you don't make any spelling mistakes in your exam. If in doubt, double check it. Just go back and have a look at it. And I'll say thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.